Yeah, so let me show you that again. So if I tap in, I might want to just create my own beat, for example. So if I tap in a rough tempo, then if I press overdub, and then I'll do like a kick and snare. It's a little bit off. Um, let's just turn it down a bit. So now I can layer another layer of hi like a layer of hi hats. You can even pitch it up and down. And of course, you can add effects to this. So if I if I've got you know if I turn on one of these effects, you can add a bit of echo over it. Put a different effect on this. Now one thing you can do, which is pretty cool, is if you've got us, uh, that running, what I can do is flick it over to its own channel so that I can keep, you know, keep it separate from the channel that my actual tune is on. So at the moment I'm sending and returning channel 3. If I switch to channel 4, you'll see the beat is now coming through on channel 4. So it's, it's separate now from my actual tune, so I could start you know, playing with the tune that I've, I've, uh, I was originally using on that channel, or obviously scratch over the top of it. You know, you could. So it basically means you can do kind of, literally make a tune up using the beat thing and put some effects over it. Or, you know, use it for rolling over the top of your tracks. It's a really sort of neat little feature that. And of course, you can load in your own samples with the uh, SD card, so you could have your own kind of bespoke, you know, sirens or your DJ name, things like that, which you could trigger or roll over the top of um, your tracks. Uh, roll, for those of you who don't know, is kind of like uh, it just basically records a little loop of audio, so you can, you know it holds the audio in the mixer while the track underneath is kind of muted if, it, if the roll effect's playing on the same channel. So what you can do with this X-pad is record like from an external source, like a deck or a mic or whatever, uh, and roll it. So you can do, if you're working with an MC or anything like that, you can basically record a little bit of what they're saying and then have it as a loop. So uh, what, again, what I've done here is I've put the mic as the send and return. So uh, that's going to be sending into the, the remix when I press the button. Uh, and then if I have it on the roll here on the X pad, um, basically what you have to do is just hold down. It, it's a bit tricky because you have to kind of press the button and speak just at the right point because if, if there's a gap of, of silence before what you've said, there's obviously, it's, when you sort of try and change the speed of the roll, it's going to be rolling silence basically. So it's almost like press it just as you talk so that there's definitely sound there. So we could say something like house music, House music, house music, house music, so house music, house music. If I press hold, house music, now it's, house music, it's kind of rolling on that music, particular music, pad. Music, so if I press the next pad along, it gets faster. House so you, you're, you're, house you're basically shortening the length of the loop. And then with the pitch effect, if I play a beat. So you can create some pretty cool effects, you know, just with a little snippet of sound, basically. Um, just got that. Um, yeah, and obviously the pitch here, you, if you go to the left with the pitch, it goes down in pitch. If you go to the right, it goes up in pitch. So you can do some pretty cool, if you get it on a really fast roll and turn the pitch up at the same time, you, it's basically creating like a, you know, you, you hear that sort of effect in, in dance music all the time, don't you? It's a kind of build up. Um, and of course you can do it from a, an external or a deck. So if I wanted to record like a, a funny little sample. So if I, now I want to send channel two into the device. So I'll go to channel two on my send and return. Uh, same thing, just basically press the Q button as I press the roll button. 
The important thing is to press hold because then it will stay looping and you haven't got to hold it down, obviously. And then... Basically completely change the, you know, what the original sound source was with these isolator effects. And then start your beat. Flip it onto its own channel. These three big knobs here only affect the isolate effects. So you've got you've got this is kind of one effects unit here, right? Whereas this is a separate one, this is a separate one. So basically if I say I'm on cut add. If I go to the left with any of these dials, it's going to cut frequencies, you know, low frequencies, mid frequencies, or high frequencies. If I go to the right with those dials, it's going to add some of those frequencies. And boost them. Yeah, so, well, it kind of adds extra, like, you know, a little bit like echo. So, put it on send return on channel three. Turn that off. So if I press add, if I go to the, to, towards the right with the mid one, and here you get a bit of a kind of echo effect. If I go to the left with it, it's basically cutting stuff. So it's, it's almost like a gated sort of thing. There's, there's a gate on the end there. But... So that those dials aren't going to affect the X pad or anything, but you can. This kind of feeds into this one. So if you've got a beat rolling from your X pad that you've created with these trigger buttons, you can apply these effects to that. So it's quite. It's all kind of roots through itself. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's basically what it is. It's kind of two effects. So you see each button has got two different labels. So if it's, I think the isolator one is just the EQ. So it's basically just an isolator EQ, like if you're familiar with that. On the, on the newer Pioneer mixers like the 900, the, the 2000, you've got the option, because a lot of the older ones, they weren't isolator EQs. So what that means is, if I'm playing a tune, if I've selected here, isolator, because we've got two options, EQ or isolator. If it's on isolator, it means these EQs can actually kill that frequency range completely. So if I take the bass out and the mids and the highs, you won't hear anything. So you can bring in tunes from kind of just the bass bringing it in, bringing up the mids. Whereas if I was on the other setting, just EQ, even though they're all down, it means it's just basically reducing the volume of the, those frequency ranges. It doesn't actually cut it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you've if you've not played around with that, if you've got one of these mixers, personally, I prefer it on isolator because I like to be able to cut things completely from the from the track. Um, so that's the same as on the RMX there. Um, if I'm sending it in, oh, yeah, because they're all down, it's cut out. Yeah. So it's actually isolating. Go the other way. It's going to boost. So yeah, so recapping, isolator means basically EQing, it's going to turn everything off if, if you turn it all the way to the left. If you turn it to the right, it's going to boost that frequency range. The other ones are, you know, the, the first word on the button is what will happen if you go to the left with it. The second word will be what will happen if you go to the right. Um, so yeah, so you've got like transform for a, uh, as an effect, that's the kind of cuts the sound in and out. So if I play it, you can hear it's kind of chopping the vocal there. If I put them all to the left, then it's kind of really severely gating the sound, yeah. so you're only getting a tiny bit of sound through. Like gate. Not as obvious. You can hear it's, it's kind of doing a bit of almost tremolo. If I go the other way, dry, I'm just going to boost it. So it's adding volume to it, basically. Um, yeah, so hopefully that's answered your question.
Point Blank Online, you've got two methods of interaction with your tutor. Firstly, you've got the weekly online masterclass, which is in real time. And then also we've got feedback on your assignments, and that's known as DVR. So the online masterclass is a one hour session you get with your tutor every week. You can ask questions about the lesson content and get instant feedback and also demonstrations on the fly from their computer desktop with our streaming technology. DVR stands for Direct Video Response and the concept is really simple. You upload your Ableton Logic or Cubase project file to your tutor, he downloads it and then pushes record on the screen capturing software and evaluates your work, so basically giving you one-to-one -one feedback. You see all of the mouse movements and any parameter changes made by your tutor. It's kind of like sitting in the studio over their shoulder watching what they're doing whilst they work. We have found the DVR process has truly revolutionized the way that we teach online and the results speak for themselves. Book your place on a course now by visiting pointblankonline.net.